Eddie, you're a philosopher. We're going to talk about free will. So I want to tell you up front, I did my doctorate in brain science. And most of my colleagues, as I now follow the literature in the last few years, are becoming stronger and stronger in their uh, statements and assertions that free will is an illusion, mm -hmm. not based upon philosophical arguments, but based upon hard data that they're coming up with. How do you view that? Well, to start with, I think the brain scientists do use philosophical arguments. They might not always realize it, but they're using arguments uh, by suggesting that a particular definition of free will is the right one, and then trying to show that their data undermines that. And so the most famous studies, as you probably know, that are used for undermining free will are the ones that suggest, look, we can see something happening in the brain before the person is aware of what they're about to do. Right. And so the worry is that means that their awareness of what they're going to do doesn't play a role in their action. It's something I call bypassing. And it's this worry that somehow our conscious deliberations or conscious choices don't play the role we think they do in our actions. So all the things of our desires, our hopes, our planning, our judgment, your term, are being bypassed by subconscious things in the brain that we can see some electrical activity prior to our sense of consciousness. Yeah, and that's the worry, but I like that you threw in everything, planning and all that, because the whole point is that the brain studies that have been done mm. don't touch on any of that stuff. They're all looking at what happens right before you typically do something rather unimportant, like deciding or picking whether to choose your, you know, push a right button or a left button. Um, John Dylan Haynes' study is looking at that, that sort of thing and seeing that, oh, look, there's stuff in the brain that happens up to seven or 10 seconds earlier that can help us predict what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. They don't get a 100% prediction. They get just a little bit above chance, but mm -hmm. they start to see activity that tells them what you're gonna, which button you're going to press. Mm -hmm. But what they haven't shown is that when you're doing something important or making a, a decision about what college you're going to go to or um, who you're going to marry or whether you're going to have children, that the sort of planning and conscious thinking you do there doesn't get a, a hold on your actions downstream. But is that not just <laughs> a different in degree as opposed to a different in kind? Because it's actually brain things going on. It may be m more going on over a longer period of time but couldn't the same argument hold that every piece of that, right. there's something in the brain going on before we're conscious of it. And now you're just aggregating together a lot of stuff instead right. of pushing buttons. Right. And, and I think that's the sort of philosophical argument that comes into play <laughs> because they're assuming that this shows sort of a universal determinism mm -hmm. or causation before we're aware of what we're doing. Right. But the key is to recognize that just because something is caused doesn't mean that it's not a cause. So, even if there's earlier stuff happening in the brain that might cause the brain activity that's involved in my conscious planning, that doesn't mean that my conscious planning doesn't play a causal role in what I do. So that there's something you can detect that happens in my brain before I realize exactly what I'm thinking and planning doesn't mean that my thinking and planning is bypassed or cut out of the picture. But it does mean something's happening prior. That's right. But would we have expected anything else? Would you really have thought that your planning came from nowhere, that your conscious right. thoughts came right. from nowhere? They came from your prior experiences, who you are, and all that's encoded in your brain. And those things bubble up to the foam of consciousness at some point. Well, foam is a loaded term because yeah. foam doesn't have a causative <laughs> effect. So that's right. a, <laughs> well, I was going back to the, the okay. worry that it's epiphenomenal. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, that, it isn't, that it's not playing a causal role. In fact, it's not the foam. It's the wave, right. but the wave was caused by earlier things too. Okay. But that doesn't mean the wave doesn't do anything. And so I think, I, I ultimately think what's going on in scientists' mind and also in ordinary people's minds when they're introduced to this stuff is this assumption that the mental states, the conscious stuff, can't be understood in terms of the neural stuff. And so if the neural stuff is doing everything, then it looks like the conscious stuff can only be foam. But if we recognize that the conscious stuff is just part of, it, it's identical to or it's related to in some important way, the neural stuff. So you have, it doesn't get cut in, out in your picture. timeline, you have neural <clears throat> stuff going on because of prior activities that we've done that bubbles up into consciousness. 
it, it that's neural stuff too. Oh well, yeah, of course, of yeah. course. But but we 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 now have the the uh, internal awareness of it. Yes. But it's all neural. That's right. And then that internal awareness somehow, when it's neural, then has a causative effect on the neural level. Yeah, because it's the conscious stuff is neural, just like the unconscious stuff. It's just a yeah. different type of process. Some and the fact it. that that conscious stuff is is neural and the unconscious stuff is neural, that doesn't that doesn't bother you. That just is that that bothers people, I think, because here's the crucial part: we have no idea how that works. So consciousness is still a mystery in the sense that we don't have a good theory of how to explain how the conscious mental processes are related to the neural processes. We have very good evidence that they're tightly related. But what we don't know is how it works. So it would be like somebody uh, trying to figure out how energy and matter are the same thing before Einstein. Mm. And now, if we get another Einstein that tells us how the consciousness and the, men and, the, and the neural are related, then we won't think, oh, the consciousness is cut out of the picture when the neural does it. I'm not volunteering for that. <laughs> <laughs> so until we have a better understanding of how mental states, especially conscious mental states, are related to neural states. I think when people are told that neural states do everything, they're going to assume the conscious states don't get to do anything. But the illusion here, to turn it around, is that the conscious states do do something once we recognize the connection. But either way, you're saying free will is not an illusion, That's no right. matter what happens with consciousness. No, if consciousness were uh, actually cut out of the picture, then it would be an illusion. But I don't think any of the evidence has suggested that yet.